Hi guys, so today I'm going to tell you about two ways that you can improve your grade in this course. But first, I'm excited to tell you about the results of our survey on climate change. We all asked people two questions. First, do you believe that climate change is real? And second, do you think that it's a problem? We also recorded the age of the participants and the temperature on the day that we did the survey. What did we find? Well, for statement one about belief, it turns out that younger people are significantly more likely to believe that global warming is real. As for statement two about whether it's a problem, there were similar results. Younger people are also more likely to believe that climate change is a problem. But the single best predictor about statement two was people's response on statement one. In other words, people's belief about climate change affects whether or not they perceive it as a threat. Here's where it gets interesting. When you account for the effects of age and belief, you can see that weather also has a significant effect on whether or not people think climate change is a threat. In other words, the younger you are, the more likely you are to believe in climate change, and given a certain level of belief, the hotter it gets, the more likely you are to be worried about it. Now there are a couple of possible explanations for this. It could be that we're just more aware of climate on hotter days. Or it could be that people just get more irritable and think everything's a problem when it's hot out. It's also interesting because a couple of recent studies have found different results on this issue. For instance, one study found no effect of extreme weather events on U.S. national opinions about climate change. But another study that analyzed the average temperature in the preceding season did find an effect on the people's opinions. And that study also found that the average temperature in the preceding season affected the way climate change was presented in the media. Media columnists were more likely to side with the scientific consensus after an unusually warm season. So could something as simple as the weather be affecting our political opinions and decision making? Obviously, it's not the only factor. Other studies have found that economic climate might be more important. For instance, around the world, the 2008 recession caused a dramatic decline in people's concern with climate change. The age effect is really interesting too. Why were younger people more likely to be concerned? A lot of you pointed out that the younger generation has grown up with the idea of climate change. And it's something that you've been learning since you were really young. So is the key education? I mean, that's kind of been a theme in this course. A few weeks ago, I asked you what you thought was the single most effective thing we could do about human overpopulation. And almost all of you said education. I definitely agree. But is education and information always a good thing? Maybe not. A recent study by Dan Cahan and a group of psychologists in the US surveyed Americans on their views on climate change. And they also collected data on people's political views, their scientific literacy, and their level of mathematical competence. And they found that the most science literate members of the US public were not the most concerned about climate change. In fact, they found the opposite trend. More scientifically literate and numerically competent people were actually less concerned. What they did notice was that the more scientifically literate people also tended to be more polarized about the issue. In other words, they had stronger opinions one way or the other. So better access to information might just make people move more strongly towards their pre-existing views. I think all these results underscore the fact that psychology, culture, and politics can't be ignored when it comes to applying environmental science. A couple of weeks ago, I also asked you whether you were optimistic about our ability to deal with pollution. 61% of you said you were optimistic. Another 34% were pessimistic. Here are a few of your answers. On the pessimistic side, Aaron points out that people are usually more concerned with short-term economic gains than the important long-term health of the biosphere. As Brian put it, money still talks in our global economy. Richard said that pollution will probably continue to be a problem until it reaches the doorstep of industry leaders. On the positive side, Karen points out that people are ingenious and we may be able to develop new technologies to deal with pollution. Ryan agrees and says that we're still in the early stages of just beginning to recognize the pollution problem. And Laura points out that we have had success in the past, like with the U.S. Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act. A few of you even had ideas, like Curtis, who said that we should use space as a dumping ground. Guess what? We already are. And maybe in 100 years, we'll have solved the pollution problem on Earth, and space pollution will be a major part of this course. Okay, just four more things to tell you about. The first two are due dates. Your last quiz is due this Sunday, and project number two is due next week. And I also want to tell you about two options you have to improve your grade. The first is a feedback survey. I tried a lot of new things in the course this year, and this survey is a way for me to tell what worked and what didn't. Now you can do the survey anonymously, but if you include your name at the end, I will give you a 1% bonus on your final grade in the course. I'll post a link to the survey on Moodle. The last thing has to do with Project 2. I want to offer you guys a way to work together. Not to do the project, but to help each other edit and make sure your writing is as strong as it can be. So here's the deal. 
I've made a spreadsheet where you can pair up. So you can sign up by entering your name and email address on that spreadsheet. And if you do that, you have to agree to be finished a first draft of your project by Monday, July 22. On that day, everybody who signed up has to email their draft to their partner. And then you have until Friday, July 26 to edit your partner's draft and send it back with some comments. Now, there are a couple of really important things to note here. First, this is completely optional. You don't have to do it. It's just an option to try to help get you as much feedback as possible before handing your assignment in. Second, if you do want to do it, you have to be done your first draft by July 22nd. And similarly, you have to get your partner's draft back to them by Friday, July 26. If you sign up and you don't follow through and leave your partner hanging, there will be repercussions. So again, don't sign up unless you're sure that you can follow through. And lastly, I want to thank you guys for your participation in the course. And I really enjoyed seeing what you guys came up with. It was fantastic. I hope you'll keep learning and keep an open mind. Good luck.